Well, folks, I'm going to read you something, and this is going to infuriate you, but this is what we're dealing with, and this is what we have to undo. I, uh, I read this article. I read it what, the other day, yesterday, I guess it was, and I was furious for hours. And you will be, too. It's in the Hill newspaper by Megan Wilson. I think this might interest you since it involves you directly. Obamacare has become a big business for an elite network of Washington lobbyists and consultants who help shape the law from the inside. More than 30 former administration officials, lawmakers, and congressional staffers who worked on the health care law have set up shop on K Street since 2010. That's Lobby Row. Major lobbying firms, and they name them, can all boast an Affordable Care Act insider on their lobbying roster, putting them in a prime position to land coveted clients. When Vice President Biden leaned over during the signing of the health care law and said to President Obama, this is a big effing deal, said Ivan Adler, a headhunter at McCormick Group, he was right. They're bragging about this. Veterans of the health care push are now lobbying for corporate giants such as Delta Airlines, UPS, BP America, Coca-Cola for health care companies, including Glaxo. I don't blame the companies. The companies are looking for help. But I want you to see how these sleazy members of Congress and their staffers behave. Some of them are passing these laws because they see a treasure trove after the law is passed because people can't understand it, and big companies in particular, they have the money to get help, and who do they hire? Ultimately, the clients are after one thing, goes on the article, expert help in dealing with the most sweeping overhaul of the country's health care system in decades. Healthcare lobbying on K Street is as strong as it ever was, and it's due to the fact that the Affordable Care Act seems to be ever-changing, Adler says. What's at stake is huge. Whenever there's a lot of money at stake, there's a lot of lobbying going on. The voracious need for lobbying help in dealing with Obamacare has created a price premium for lobbyists who had first-hand experience in crafting or debating the law. Members of Congress and their staffers and administration officials, ladies and gentlemen, are becoming multi-millionaires off of you while you're losing your health care, your full-time jobs being cut to a part-time job, while you can't get the doctors that you want and on and on and on. These people are becoming multi-millionaires. And not because they've created anything productive or filled some void, but because they've used the power of government against you. Experts say that those able to fetch the highest salaries have come from the Department of Health and Human Services or committees with oversight power over health care. Demand for Obamacare insiders is even higher now that major pieces of the law, including the health care exchanges and individual insurance mandate, are being set up through a slew of complicated federal regulations. Does this not just burn you? While lobbying revenue at major firms has been flat or declining in recent years, the health care law has generated steady work, a trend that's likely to continue for years. That's because Obamacare runs on a long timeline, well into the next administration. And unless the law is severely crippled, the reforms, rules, and requirements will be rolling out through at least 2020. And that's good news for lobbyists who want to sign up clients for the long haul. The windfall from the health care overhaul is being reaped at firms large and small. Small veterans of the legislative push have landed at boutique firms that are increasingly specialized in lobbying niches. It's just disgusting. The firm Avenue Solutions, for instance, recently hired Yvette Fontenot, a former staffer for both the Senate Finance Committee, which wrote Obamacare's tax-related provisions, and HHS's Office of Health Reform, which is assisting the implementation. Since her hire in April, the four-woman firm has picked up health and the number of companies they've picked up as lobbying firms. The Democratic firm banks about $3 million in revenues per year, record show, but is on a pace to grow in 2013, earning $1.8 million through only the first half of the year. And it's not just ex-staffers who are becoming trusted Obamacare guides. Former members of Congress are lobbying on the law as well. Former Representative Earl Pomeroy, Democrat in North Dakota, joined Alston and Byrd in 2011 after dealing with health care and tax issues as member of the House Ways and Means Committee. Now he and his one-time chief of staff, Bob Siggins, are lobbying on Obamacare for clients, and they name them a bunch of clients. Then there's consulting. Consulting is another avenue former staffers and officials have can take 
to work for outside interests while they look to comply with and shape the implementing regulations? This is not a do-it-yourself project. It's complicated, said Adler. They need help from insiders to help navigate this thing correctly. Former senior counsel to HHS Secretary Kathleen Sibelius, Dora Hughes, became a senior policy advisor at the law firm Sidley Austin last year. Now, she's not a registered lobbyist, but she provides, quote, strategic policy advice and so forth. Now, let me tell you something. I am so sick and tired of this, you know what, this crap, I'll use that word. I am so fed up. People becoming wealthy who wrote a law that is mind-boggling, that affects our lives directly and those of our children and our grandchildren and our parents and our grandparents. Becoming filthy rich, not through the capitalist system, through crony capitalism and not even crony capitalism. They are appendages to the federal government. That's why I'm sick of these green jobs that Obama talks about where his donors get filthy wealthy, wealthier than they already are, taking out schemes to separate you and me and our income through taxation and to fund them. This is corruption in capital letters. This Obamacare, it's corrupt from top to bottom, and it's totally unconstitutional. I'm going to tell you folks something. If you think that John Boehner and Mitch McConnell are going to fix this, you are wrong. If you think the Republican National Committee is going to work on this, you are wrong. The Republicans are in on this. And I say that as a lifelong Republican. I start from the premise that we live today in a post-constitutional period. I start from the premise that most of what the federal government is doing today would have been rejected by the framers of the Constitution. I start from the premise that we need to find a way to correct this. We need to find a way to get back on course. And I'm starting to read and hear from people who object to the Constitution itself. I'm talking about pseudo-conservatives. I'm talking about Article 5. I'm talking about an amendment process that was given to us by the framers of the Constitution. Now, I want to get a few things straight, as straight as I can, because look at this. Look at this. And this is just part of it. 